Hello, bonjour à tous. Thank you for joining us today for the Tourism Town Hall. My name is Craig Foley and I'm the CEO of Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador, and I will be your moderator for today's session. TIAC's Town Hall series is an event partnership between the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Destination Canada, and Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador. We would also like to thank Air Canada as the sponsor for this series. This Tourism Town Hall will provide the opportunity to hear from TIAC and Destination Canada to better understand efforts being made nationally on behalf of our industry. More importantly, this session will provide an opportunity to engage on issues affecting your business and the tourism industry in this province during this COVID. It will also give you a chance to provide feedback on government policy for the recovery and rebuilding of our sector. Before we start, just a reminder that we will have time at the end of this session for some questions and answers. If you have any questions that you have not already sent us in advance, please submit them through the Q&A interface, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. We will pick up on those during the course of the presentation. Also, please note that today's session will be recorded and made available on TIAC's website. Lastly, for those that may be more fluent in French, we have sent the presentation by email in French for you to easily follow along, and this will also be available on the TIAC website. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the land which we each call home. Uh, we do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their culture. We respectfully acknowledge the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as the ancestral homelands of many diverse populations of Indigenous people who have contributed to 9,000 years of history, including the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland. Today, this province is home to diverse populations of Indigenous and other peoples. We also acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit. Our panelists for today are Brenda O'Reilly, Chair of Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador, Beth Potter, President and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, and Marcia Walden, President, President and CEO of Destination Canada. It is now my pleasure to welcome Brenda O'Reilly, Chair of Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador. Brenda? Thank you, Craig. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending the virtual tourism town hall this morning. And I would like to thank Beth and Marcia for joining us as well. I am here, I am sure you will hear a lot more about what is happening at the national level from Beth and Marcia. But this morning, I would like to review some of the things that Hospitality Newfoundland Labrador and other, other industry stakeholders have been doing on your behalf. May has recently been proclaimed as Tourism Awareness Month and Hospitality NL is hoping that the residents of the province are ready to experience what the province's tourism industry has to offer and to acknowledge the industry's value to the provincial economy. We are, opening, we are operating in a new normal and working against the challenges of a global pandemic with closed borders and new public health protocols. It's so important for our residents to understand why we need to keep the industry alive and show up for those who depend on it because tourism really does matter. Hospitality NL will be working with many partners and stakeholders throughout the month and beyond to spread that message. As the Department of Health expands the availability of COVID-19 vaccines, it is important for everyone to get the vaccine so we can return to business and welcome visitors from around the world to our beautiful province. As you all know, last week, the province's Economic Recovery Task Force presented the report, The Big Reset. The report outlined many revenue generation and cost cutting recommendations. We are working through the information contained in the report and we'll make sure that the voice of the industry is heard to ensure any impacts on tourism businesses are minimal. As well, the Premier's Advisory Council on Tourism has worked hard over the last few months 
to prepare reports and recommendations for the Premier and the government. We will be advocating for full implementation of those recommendations, so the need of resources and supports are made available to ensure the sector's recovery in the short and long term. Hospitality Newfoundland Labrador will also advocate for the extension of SUES, the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy, and ensure the program meets the needs of all tourism businesses. There were many measures outlined in the federal budget that promised to help the sector. We are reviewing all of them now to see how these will impact the sector and work with our national partners to seek better clarification and information on these measures. The provincial budget will be announced on Monday, May 31st. We will be looking to that budget for additional supports and resources to help the industry. As mentioned, COVID-19 overshadowed much of our advocacy priorities, a necessary pivot to protect businesses. However, Hospitality NL also prioritized several other prominent policy initiatives in 2020 and 2021. Prominent policy priorities include fair rules in the accommodation sectors with the passing of Bill 52. We continue to work with all levels of government to ensure these new regulations surrounding unlicensed accommodations are now enforced. Getting this balance right will protect communities and ensure that when we can welcome visitors again, we will continue to provide safe and enjoyable experiences throughout our province. Another major policy priority for the industry this year has been to the province, its impact on visitation. Access and transportation, whether by air, sea or land, continues to be a major strategic priority for the recovering growth of the tourism industry. And with continual cuts of air service to our province and reduced capacity to ferry services, the road to recovery becomes longer. Hospitality NL will continue to aggressively advocate for increased access to this province with our partners at the airport authorities, the Department of Tourism, Culture and Recreation and others across the province. We know that addressing issues of access and transportation is essential to ensure recovery and growth for the provincial tourism economy. Hospitality Newfoundland Labrador continues to be a dedicated partner on the Newfoundland Labrador Tourism Board our industry's public-private partnership, whose mandate is to advise on the implementation of Vision 2020. As we have now moved into 2021, some of our focus has begun to shift to the future of tourism beyond that 2020 vision milestone. We are working in conjunction with our tourism partners to determine what the structure of tourism will look like going forward and how we can assure that we are well positioned to meet the needs of a thriving industry and help it continue to grow well into the future. In closing, we will continue to raise your voice and be there every step of the way to support you and your business and organization. The information we gather from you on a daily basis, whether from phone calls, emails, surveys, webinars, one industry, one industry sessions, et cetera, have helped the organization tremendously continuously shaping our advocacy efforts to inform key decision makers in all levels of government. By using that voice and working together with our partners on a regional, provincial and national scale, I am confident that our tourism industry will not only recover, but we be poised to grow to its maximum potential. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brenda, and thanks for outlining some of the key things we're dealing with this year, no doubt, a pivotal year, in addition to COVID. Uh, and Brenda, we'll have some chance for some questions uh, towards the end. Uh, I'd now uh, like to welcome and introduce, and, and it's my regret, Beth, that we can't do this in person, uh, but we will have an opportunity, the new president and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Beth Potter. Thank you, Craig, and good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be with you here today, virtually, in Newfoundland and Labrador, and I too wish we could be doing this in person. Bonjour tout le monde, et merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. I want to add my thanks to all of you for participating in today's Tourism Town Hall and for allowing me to share an update on the work that the Tourism Industry Association of Canada has been doing on your behalf. Before I start, 
I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nation people that call this land home from coast to coast to coast. We extend our respect to all First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people for their valuable past and present contributions to this land. Newfoundland and Labrador is a beautiful land with an incredible reputation for the best hospitality around the world. We at TIAC want to ensure that your travel and tourism industry survives and successfully recovers post COVID-19. As many of you may know, I recently joined TIAC as president and CEO, but I am no stranger to the industry and have been actively involved for more than 30 years. I understand how hard these past 15 months have been on you and how concerned you are about the future. Many of you are asking, how are we going to get through this? and what is TIAC doing to help? And that's why I'm here, to give you an update on our current activities, initiatives, and our plans to lead Canada's tourism economy through to recovery. For those of you who do not know, a bit of background, TIAC is the national voice for the tourism industry. We take action on behalf of Canadian tourism businesses, advocating, promoting and supporting policies, programs, and activities that will benefit the sector's growth and development. And while our office is based in Ottawa, we work closely with our provincial and territorial counterparts, including Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador. Craig and his team keep us abreast of what is happening here so we can address the full range of issues facing this industry. In a nutshell, TIAC exists to give you a voice at the federal level so that we can keep focused, so that you can keep focused on running your business. We are here to fight for you, which is exactly what we've been doing, fighting for your survival through this pandemic. For the past 15 months, we have been elevating the, impact, the issues impacting our industry and meeting with federal officials, including MPs and senators, to share stories of industry challenges and needs. We have been pushing for sector specific support and relief programs. From the very beginning of this pandemic, our message to government has been clear. The tourism industry is a vital economic generator and employer of millions. Canada cannot afford to lose its tourism industry. Tourism was the first hit, the hardest hit, and will be the last to recover. And this industry needs support now and through to recovery. Our advocacy efforts continue daily, and we were happy to see tourism repeatedly mentioned in this budget, which is an acknowledgement of the struggles of the industry. It is also a step in the right direction by the government in recognizing the value and, and contribution that this industry makes and the support required to ensure we can rebuild. But what does this mean to you and your business? I want to highlight a few important pieces and want to mention that there are also a number of measures in the budget that are not directly tied to tourism, but impact our sector. Things like affordable housing, broad, broadband infrastructure, immigration, and funding for Parks Canada. The 2021 budget includes a $1 billion package for tourism support over three years. This includes funding through the regional development agencies, in your case, ACOA, for festivals and events, and towards a tourism relief fund to support investments by local tourism businesses in adapting to public health measures to help recovery. And it also includes funding to Destination Canada to ensure Canadian destinations are top of mind for Canadians in the beginning and to entice the return of the high value international travelers ensuring we remain a player on the global level. The, Can the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy and Rent Subsidy are very important programs to our sector. The proposed extension to September is a good signal towards business support, but we know the sector will need support past the fall. And while we welcome the extension, we will continue our work to ensure the hardest hit businesses receive continued support at existing levels. There was also a proposal for the new Canada Recovery Hiring Program for eligible employers that continue to experience declines in revenue. This initiative was proposed to help businesses hire back laid off workers 
and bring on new ones. There are numerous other items in the budget that impact our sector. However, our main priority is to ensure that you understand when and if these supports become available and how to access them. We will actively be sending out updates and information to industry as we learn more through our discussions with government. And we promise to work directly with Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador to ensure that you have this information as quickly as possible. Now, while we share this information, I would like to ask you to please continue sharing with us. It is crucial that we hear from you on issues you are facing, particularly pertaining to federal support programs so that we can work to address them. When we meet with federal officials, we tell your story of losing staff, losing revenue, and worrying about how you will continue to operate. We highlight what your losses and struggles mean to the community and country in economic impact and the unique needs of the tourism industry. While we monitor program rollout, we also need to look ahead. And TIAC is committed to champion the recovery of the industry. Proof of vaccination is something you've probably all heard about in the media lately. We know that this will need to become a common part of travel documentation moving forward. And our efforts are to lead the conversation on ensuring a national approach. We are working to ensure a one of Canada system, as opposed to different regional approaches, which would provide confusion to domestic and international travelers. However, we know not everyone will get vaccinated. And that is why it is crucially important that we also plan for testing and processes for those that are traveling without a vaccine. It's our firm belief that travel cannot be limited only to those who have been vaccinated. Testing and contact tracing will have to be a part of the system. And TIAC is looking, is also looking to lead the way in changing the current narrative on behalf of the sector. We need public confidence to understand that when restrictions are lifted, our businesses are prepared to offer experiences following all of the necessary health and hygiene protocols. We know just how much work and investment you have put into ensuring your businesses are compliant and ready for guests. We need to build the consumer confidence for travel to resume again so that you can get back to business. We know travel will resume and we are advocating for a plan, calling on government to draw a line in the sand and set a target date to reopen. You can't plan with uncertainty and we know you need time to prepare, to retool, retrain and rehire before you will be ready to open. We have been facilitating conversations with the Canadian government and at the global table through the Rural Travel and Tourism Council looking at what other countries have been doing to ensure Canada is part of the seamless traveler experience for people that are moving around the world as we recover from this pandemic. While we address these challenges facing the industry, we are also forging ahead on other efforts, including Tourism Week, a national campaign that has been led by TIAC since 2003. It's a seven day event to recognize Canada's tourism economy and the impact it has on every community across the country. This year, Tourism Week is May 23rd to 30th, and we are calling on Canadians to take the 2021 Tourism Pledge, that is, when restrictions are lifted, to travel in Canada. We are extending an invitation to come together as a country and support our local tourism destinations, businesses, and employees. Please visit tourismcounts.ca to learn more. And before I close, I would like to personally thank our members for supporting our advocacy efforts and encourage you all to get involved and support the organizations at the local, provincial, and national levels who are working on your behalf. Thank you again for joining us for our town hall today, and I look forward to addressing your questions in our discussion time. Back to you, Craig. Thanks very much, Beth. And, and certainly uncertainty, I think, is the word for the last 12 to 18 months, whatever the timeline has been. But one certainty in my mind has been the need for this continued partnership for advocacy so that the messages can be uh, brought to bear with the decision makers. And we certainly appreciate TIAC's uh, partnership and support in doing that. 
So again, Beth, uh, there will be time for questions as you identified. I'd now like to welcome uh, the President and CEO of Destination Canada, Marcia Walden. Marcia, welcome to Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you, Craig. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. It's bright and early here in Vancouver, but it's great to be speaking with all of you, uh, all of our partners in Newfoundland and Labrador. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining you today from Vancouver, which is the traditional home of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. Je suis très heureuse d'être ici aujourd'hui. Je vais donner cette présentation en anglais. Mais nous avons fourni le document en français aux gens intéressés. I want to start this morning uh, by providing you a very brief background on who Destination Canada is and what our role is within the sector. We are a federal crown corporation and our mandate is to sustain a vibrant and profitable Canadian tourism industry. And we do that through marketing, research, destination development work, and the partnerships that we form with um, agencies and private sector partners right across the country. Much of our industry's strength, as you well know, is found in the relationships that we have all formed with partners. And that's been especially important in this past year. And so it is with us and Destination Canada, TIAC and Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador have worked together for many years to bolster our industry's prospects in what is uh, a very highly competitive global sector. And as everyone who is watching today knows, um, this collaborative response has become more and more critical as the year has gone on. So before I move on to talk about what's ahead of us, um, I'd just like to pause for a moment and um, characterize what has been going on this past year and this slide says it all. I know that for all of you on this call, this past year has been incredibly difficult. And I want to acknowledge that harsh reality and also acknowledge that I know that recovery ahead of us is still going to be very hard. To help with that recovery, um, today I'm gonna to talk about three phases of the work, the work that we've been doing across essentially three time horizons. First of all, just surviving this pandemic and getting through these um, uh, ever evolving restrictions that continue to face us and to and fro each day. Secondly, reviving market revenue, which is the only true path to true recovery. And there is promise of growth and opportunity on the horizon for all of us if we can get through this next part. And finally, thriving which is really about increasing the vitality of our industry overall, making sure that our industry continues to deliver net benefits to communities and allows us to build long-term resilience for our businesses. So let's just start with survival and the initial response that uh, we had to the pandemic to help our industry survive its de devastating impacts in the last year. We, of course, like many of you knew that the restart was going to start um, at a very hyper local level. And in most of Canada, we saw a ray of hope last summer. Uh, and we worked with our provincial and territorial partners to make sure that we had an agile co-op marketing response that would allow our partners to respond to the very different realities that faced us in every part of the country. And we did that through a matching program as you see on the screen. But we also invested more than 18 million in other initiatives and partnerships to help bring together significant players, uh, many of whom have huge reach to really try to extend the impact and buying power of our partners across Canada, as many of them struggled with revenue problems. And I have to acknowledge the speed and scale of government response that we have seen to this pandemic so far. Never before have we seen this kind of response in times of peace from every level of government. And listed here are just a few of the over $15 billion in investments that the federal government 
uh, has implemented to help support tourism in this past year. But looking ahead, I think we are seeing some clear signals of future demand that are pointing in a positive direction for all of us. But we also know that our research is showing that this sentiment follows real-time conditions in a, in, and correlates very closely. So as we move into this next phase, it's really crucial that we all work together to restore consumer confidence in travel, whether that's as a traveler or as a host of travelers. Right now, we know that 80% of Canadians say they do plan to travel when restrictions are lifted. But Canada typically has a huge travel deficit. Canadians, in other words, spend almost double on outbound travel compared to what foreign travelers spend on inbound travel. And while we know the domestic marketplace is going to be critical, we really need to work together to ensure that Canadians are keeping their dollars in Canada and helping to speed our sector's recovery. That will be very, very important over this summer of 2021. Destination Canada's short-term marketing plans are really designed to channel that domestic demand to destinations all across Canada. And a key part of our plan to revive revenue is this multi-phased approach that aligns our messaging with the evolution of health restrictions as they unfold in different parts of the country. Right now, we're still in the influence phase. And during this stage, we have a few key goals around increasing Canadians' understanding of the importance of Canada's tourism industry, inspiring confidence so that they will travel domestically and not save their money for some future opportunity internationally. And we need to reignite the welcoming spirit of Canadian communities to ensure that they feel ready to welcome visitors when the time is right. As conditions improve, uh, we will continue to introduce more and more aggressive calls to action that really get Canadians planning and booking their travel. And many have done so already, as I'm sure you're aware. In the months ahead, uh, we will have an opportunity with these early travelers to really use them as a lever to inspire others to follow their example. So all of us can play a very important role in the peer-to-peer -peer social sharing of those early travelers to help amplify uh, and um, uh, spread more widely the confidence that they are showing in travel and ensure others follow their lead. So here are just a few examples of our work that uh, are quite specific to Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, on the upper left side of the screen, you may, may recognize Christina Cody, and she, along with her husband, Chris Conway, are brewers and owners of Landwash Brewery in Mount, Mount Pearl. And Christina told us that it was the amazing collaboration of the local craft beer community that's helping them get through this pandemic. And together they advocated for online retail and curbside pickup, and they've been selling their beer very successfully across the province. And that local support has been fantastic for them. And even though our short-term efforts are focused on domestic travel and operators, uh, like we just described, we are continuing to do work in our international markets as well, of course. Uh, we continue to work very closely with our in-market teams all over the world to ensure that Canada stays top of mind while we are in this pause period. Uh, and we're maintaining those global travel trade and travel media relationships that we have that are so important to keeping Canada on the radar of international travelers. And one example uh, of that work can be seen on the screen right now, uh, which is Boundless Magazine, a very high impact product that's published by Virtuoso, who caters to high value travelers. And this magazine is entirely focused on travel ideas in Canada. So what will it take to really recover and thrive in the longer term? Well, we believe that it begins with a new North Star, one that orients us uh, much toward really why our corporation exists in the first place. And our aspiration is really to enhance the quality of life of Canadians as an industry and to enrich the lives of our visitors. We enable Canadian culture to thrive and place-based regenerative economies to emerge. 
We try to work collaboratively with other organizations, including all of you here today, uh, in order to help elevate Canada's competitive competitiveness as the tourism destination in the, in the global scene. So we hope that you would want to come on that journey with us. In order to do so, uh, you can see some of the ways to stay connected with us on the screen now. Je vous encourage à rester connecté avec nous sur nos canaux de communication. Merci beaucoup and thank you very much. Back to you, Craig. Thanks so much, Marcia. Uh, and again, uh, if uncertainty was a key word for the last uh, number of months, I think pivot was the other big word. And, and indeed, Destination Canada has done that as well. Um, so I guess it's time now uh, we get into the, the question and answer portion of this. Um, I know that some people have sent in questions in advance, uh, but I'll also encourage anyone that may have a question to use the uh, interface at the bottom and we will get to those um, as they come in. So uh, Beth, to put you on the hot seat first, um, I think one of the key uh, things that we heard from industry, at least in Newfoundland and Labrador, the one measure from government that kept things going uh, up to this point has been SUs or Qs, depending on your, your pronunciation of that. How likely is it that SUs will continue till June 2022? So that, that's a that's a very good question, um, and and we don't know the answer to that. But it is certainly what we are hearing uh, the industry needs. Uh, we have already been in communication with government to let them know that the ramp down that is currently planned um, for uh, SUS starting in July of this year. Um, it just isn't going to cut it for the tourism and hospitality industry um, and that we are going to need support at existing levels uh, ongoing and um, we've talked you know in terms like to the end of this year um, and more recently we've started asking them to the to June of 2022 as we know that not all segments of our industry uh, will be uh, back up and, and, and running with some kind of positive revenue um, by the end of the year. Um, the cruise industry is an example and, and, and all those that are in that cruise supply chain, um, they, you know, they have no choice. Their industry is completely shut down until March of next year, thanks to Transport Canada. So, um, so those conversations are ongoing and, and we hope to be successful in, in getting that, uh, that continued support. Certainly, and I think we'd be happy to lend our voice in that fight uh, because it seems to be uh, one of the most important things that we're hearing from operators. Uh, another big one, Beth, while, uh, while I've got you on that seat, um, just prior to COVID beginning, we were hearing from operators about a very sudden increase in insurance costs. Their premiums, I've heard them anywhere from 25 to 300% increase. Uh, so with these increased costs or, or the cost skyrocketing, what can we do? What can we expect to manage that? Because it's putting a very unfair burden uh, on, a, you know, on operators who are really against the ropes now. Any, any thoughts on how we can address that? Yeah, so I think it's important to understand the situation that we're in. Um, the uh, insurance sector globally, um, just prior to the pandemic, began a what they call a hard fix, uh, which means that they are reevaluating um, their liability against potential claims. Um, as you, you know, if you'll cast your mind back to prior to the pandemic, there were uh, several national or uh, natural disasters that took place around the world that really drew down um, uh, the insurance industry's uh, reserves. So they were in the middle of a hard fix. Um, and at the same time, two of the major underwriters that covered Canada for their own reasons decided to pull out of Canada. So we were faced with a bit of a double whammy. Um, 
going through a hard fix and you know we're down a couple uh, you know we're down to major underwriters so um we are working with the insurance bureau of canada we have raised this as an area of concern uh, with the government of canada one of the things that we're pointing to as a potential way to help the industry through this um, are programs that um, other countries have adopted uh, for um, areas that, uh, or, or for sectors that are, are hard to insure. A great example of that is the floodplains in, uh, in England. So the British government um, co-insures the floodplains because they know that pretty much every spring or every second spring, those areas are going to flood out and there are going to be insurance claims. And the insurance companies just walked away. They didn't want to, they didn't want to insure those anymore because it was just a losing proposition. So the, the, there's a, a government run government backed program. Um, and so we're looking at programs like that to bring forward to the Canadian government to say, you know, we need to find a way to help tourism operators that are having a hard time finding insurance or the where the cost of their insurance premium has reached an unsustained uh, level um, and to see how we can support. So these are ongoing conversations that we're having um, with government now. Thanks very much. And, and I think it is a national thing. Uh, you know, when it was here, we thought it was perhaps a local thing. But as we as we work through it, we are hearing that it's in, in every province and territory across the country. Thanks very much. And we'll continue to work with you on that. Uh, Marcia, um, you know, last year we were in, in Newfoundland and Labrador uh, I guess we, we all we had was a, an a Atlantic bubble, uh, which collapsed. Uh, and we know that, uh, you know, for every dollar spent by a, a resident traveler, uh, a, a national traveler is worth twice that and an international traveler is with, worth three times that. So uh, we really want to get back to that. But I guess my first part of the question would be, uh, with respect to interprovincial travel, what are your expectations and thoughts around that? Well, I think in general, we're expecting that things will unfold much in the same way as they did in the summer of 2020, that intra-provincial travel will be encouraged first. And certainly that seems to echo the sentiments that we see of Canadians themselves. They need to build, rebuild their confidence in uh, traveling and also in hosting. And uh, we do know that um, uh, travel to visit friends and family will likely be first out of the gate. Uh, as there's a lot of pent up demand for families to reconnect. And so we do see that um, happening. But as we experienced last year, you know, the case counts that are uh, very different in different parts of the country will dictate how this country reopens. And um, we do see some uh, measures in places like Alberta and Quebec um, clamping down, but uh, the, the population remains remarkably resilient. So amongst all Canadians, uh, our residents in Quebec and Alberta seem to be um, the most likely to wanna to travel and beyond their own provincial borders when the time is right. Uh, whereas we have a lot more work to do in, amongst the Atlantic provinces and British Columbians who only 20% of those residents feel ready to accept visitors from beyond their borders. Um, and, and to themselves travel beyond their provincial borders. So a very different scenario right across the country. So it'll be important we do everything we can to build that confidence right out of the gate. Okay, thanks. Also, uh, I guess, as I referenced, the importance of international travelers. Um, you know, when it comes to targeted vaccination rates and things like that, when do you see the US-Canada border being able to open safely? Well, I think Beth and I both wish we had that crystal ball in front of us. Um, and I have to say that any of the remarks I'm about to make do not come from any official health sources that would um, confirm or deny them. Uh, essentially, we are doing models based on what we see our health officials 
uh, talking about. So about two weeks ago, Dr. Tam released a report that said that when we reach 75% of Canadian adults vaccinated um, and with the first dose and 20% having been vaccinated by the, uh, with a second dose, then we can start talking about uh, potential border reopenings. So our, based on those statistics from um, the Health Canada, uh, our modeling shows that we could reach that 75% marker uh, right around June 12th. And about later in July, July 20th or so, we could reach that second marker of 20% with a second dose. And that the borders would likely open four to five weeks after that. So still probably not seeing any border reopening prior to the beginning of September, regrettably. Thanks very much, Marcia. And, and again, fully understanding uh, that caveat that you <laughs> eloquently put in place. Uh, Brenda, perchance theater says, uh, we will be severely limited in earning potential because of the cap on capacity. Uh, not sure what can be done to relax restrictions on attendance. Perhaps you have some thoughts on that. Thank you, Craig. Uh, of course, not unlike what Marsha just said, the vaccinations are key um, to this, the rollout of the vaccinations. And of course, um, as you know, we are, you know, watching that information co closely. And we have met with the um, with the premier and the and the tourism minister about how can we get the provincial uh, restrictions lifted in correspondence to the vaccines rolling out. So, you know, that is what we're advocating for, that there will be a correlation between vaccine rollouts, um, you know, one dose, two doses, um, so that we can get our capacities um, lifted somewhat, maybe in correlation to the percent of vaccinations that are rolling out. But vaccinations are key, key for our industry, uh, key for all of us to participate in it as well. Um, but we we using that number because as well, our governments have said that everybody who wants a vaccination will have one by the end of June. So, you know, early July. So we're saying, well, okay, then. So let us get back to bigger numbers for uh, group gatherings and capacities. So we're still putting pressure on that, as you know, and we will continue to do that. Thanks very much, Brenda. Uh, we do have a couple of questions, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and read now at the same time and speak into a computer. I'm not sure how well I can multitask. Caroline Swan, who uh, works at one of our partner organizations, Adventure Central, said, uh, "Thanks for the presentation, uh, Beth and Marcia. How do you see destination management organizations helping tourism businesses and destinations moving forward?" They are essential assisting organizations for the industry and are very active currently. Would you like me to take that one, Beth? I think that's right up here. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think we have a very well functioning ecosystem in Canada. If you think about the various roles that um, each of the destination management organizations has worked out and which parts of um, the travel economy and the, and the partnerships that we have that each level supports. So in my view, the role of both the provincial territorial as well as the, the community level uh, DMO are going to be critical to the ongoing success of our um, overall tourism economy. You know, typically we have a role to play internationally and our, um, uh, our local DMOs uh, spend a lot more time marketing their individual communities, connecting with members, providing um, advice to local governments on how to better develop their communities. And we will um, too be weighing in on destination development more in the future, trying to align federal funds with the desires of local communities uh, to invest in their tourism operations. So I know right now many of these um, community DMOs are um, extremely challenged for operating funds and um, the provinces have been, I think, coming to the rescue, not everywhere, but um, in many parts of the country uh, to just help us get through this survival stage. Uh, so that um, we collectively can start reviving. So I, I continue to see all parts of the system as, as critical to our future. Thanks very much, Marcia. 
Uh, one of the, uh, I guess, two of the other questions there have kind of been answered a little bit organically, but uh, Colleen Kennedy said, thanks, Marcia, for mentioning the need for communities to be receptive to welcoming visitors. Positive messaging and communication to community is very important. And I think that resident sentiment has been very um, pronounced here. It's well understood in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, one of the things that uh, hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador has been tasked with doing is a bit of a forward facing campaign with the support of the provincial government, uh, TCAR. Uh, so we're hoping to at least some of, uh, address some of that in that forward facing campaign uh, we need to be able to live with COVID. We need to be able to welcome people. We need to be able to show the faces of uh, tourism and, and understand fully that these impacts are, are affecting the very core of communities. Um, you know, it, it is the faces of tourism. So uh, we will be rolling out something uh, very soon on that. We have uh, a team hired to do that. And we're very much looking forward to uh, being able to deliver on that. Uh, uh, that's terrific, Craig. And I'll just pop in here for a moment, if you don't mind, to say that we too have something that will be coming out the week of um, Tourism Week, uh, which I think really generally marks the beginning of our peak season for most of Canada. And so we, and I know Tayak, everybody's going to have a full court press on those messages come uh, a little later in May. There's, a, there's another question. Uh, what is the best strategy for appealing to the staycation market for this summer? And what is the best advertising routes? Uh, I'll throw that open to all three. Just, uh, I'm not sure who would know the best answer. Well, I think uh, if I can, I'll, I'll be brief, Beth. <laughs> um, it, in my mind, it really is going to start with that peer-to-peer -peer sharing uh, let's make sure that those early adopters of travel are ones that we uh, show and demonstrate to the rest of the country that are active, that are having a, uh, a safe journey, and, um, uh, and you know, that, that it's the incredible experience it always has been. It'll be a little different to be sure, but it's still going to be great to travel and we need to make sure other people uh, see their friends, family and colleagues traveling. It, it, and to build on that, it will be the first step towards rebuilding everyone's confidence in, in travel. We, they've been told for 15 months to stay home and don't, not go anywhere. So uh, this, is, this is a really important um, step uh, towards you know, recovery. Um, and so um, rebuilding consumers' confidence, you know, as businesses, telling people what you've done to make sure that they can feel safe uh, in your environment, to show them that you've lined up and done everything that your, your public health authority has asked you to do as a business um, so that uh, you know, they, they have no reason not to, to visit with you. Um, I think that's really important. And then that community message um, and you know, remembering that travel has you know, shown only a 1.1% of transmission rate for this virus. And so reminding uh, our local residents that um, travelers coming into the community uh, are a good thing and that uh, they help to support jobs at the local level and that they they help to you know, bring new tax dollars in at the local level. You know, this is, this is something that communities uh, and the local economies need in order to uh, to be the communities that these people chose to live in. So um, it, it's kind of a double message: get get out there and and remind everybody what you've done in order to provide uh, an, a, a COVID friendly environment or an anti COVID friendly environment, and also speak to your local community members about. Um, the incredible value that visitors to the community bring. Um, Craig, I'd like to add too, um, as well for us here on a local level, 
that um, you know updating your um, your business on the tourism website is important, and also um, creating experiences and bringing in partners uh, in our sector to offer different experiences for for the staycationers, as well as um, I think um, social media is sort of king, uh, certainly in those kinds of uh, things, especially in a short term campaign. Um, also, I think our forward-facing campaign that we're, we're launching uh, later in May will help with the messaging of, you know, support local, get out in your community, support the local operators, um, because we know how valuable, uh, you know, the tourism sector is, especially in rural parts of our province, um, everywhere, of course, but uh, we do know that it's super important. So I, I, I think that there's a bunch of things that people can be doing. Thanks very much to all three for answering that. The next one, uh, I'm thinking perhaps Beth, but uh, I won't limit anyone from weighing in. I feel like a quiz show host here. Um, HR, uh, this is from Todd White, by the way, and Todd uh, runs a hotel in uh, Rocky Harbor. Uh, HR was a major issue for our industry pre-COVID. The labor shortage has now been compounded by an exodus of skilled and unskilled workers as they seek employment in other industries. What is the strategy going forward to rebuild a workforce for tourism? Well, I will tell you that there are a number of things uh, that are starting to take place. Um, with the Future Skills Center, um, the, uh, there's a, a program called Tourism and Hospitality Emergency Recovery. Um, and it, it provides uh, an opportunity to train uh, folks to move into the tourism and hospitality industry. Um, and it's a program that was piloted uh, last year uh, in Ontario and is about to go national. So, you know, watch for that. Tourism HR Canada has a number of initiatives that they are um, lining up and getting underway. Um, in particular, this summer, there is a, a student hire program, a grant program that you could take advantage of. Um, you'll see some of that information coming out shortly. Um, and and uh, from an advocacy perspective, we um, have already started speaking to government about this and sharing our ideas around how we think we are going to need to um, make some changes. Uh, changes to immigration policy is an example to ensure that new Canadians arriving have the skills that we need in our industry. Um, as we are a large employer of new Canadians, we want to make sure that uh, when you know those that are arriving um, have the skills and the and the expectation to work uh, in our suite of sectors. So there's a, a number of things on a number of fronts. Um, I would suggest that through Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador that you'll be able to access uh, many of those programs. Um, you can also uh, uh, connect with, with the TIAC website um, or you can go to tourismhr.ca, I think it's .ca, um, uh, for Tourism HR Canada and, uh, and check out what they've got there as well. But uh, know that this is, this is very much top of mind um, and we're very aware that our industry is, is unfortunately leading the way in unemployment rates. Uh, and we have also lost or displaced um, over half a million people uh, in our suite of sectors. And that those folks, for the most part, have had to move on because they've had to find a way to keep um, a paycheck coming into their, house, their households. So we've got a, a, a big job ahead of us uh, and we don't want to mince words on it in any way. It's, it's going to be really important that we all work collectively together. Um, and so if uh, you've got ideas, um, if something you find something that's worked for you, um, please share it with Craig, please share it with me. Um, and we will uh, take every suggestion and, and piece of uh, advice from industry uh, if, if we can use it to, to help solve uh, what's going to be a, an incredible, the next crisis, basically. Uh, thanks very much, Beth, and, and thanks, Todd, for the question. Uh, this is going to be the last one that we have time for out of the question and answer. I'm, I'm very cognizant of the remaining time. So, um, But, uh, Brenda, perhaps this one is, is something you can address. Access to our island is always a challenge. Uh, the national greening of the economy direction is in conflict with the current situation of planes flying over Newfoundland 
uh, to an international, uh, international travel hub in Nova Scotia. This increases the environmental impacts and costs of people traveling both to NL and leaving NL to Europe and beyond. How can we get this practice eliminated and require airlines to provide better access to our province? Brenda, do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, Craig, <laughs> it's a big subject, isn't it? Um, access is so important for us prior to the pandemic, but even more so now. Um, you know, we have met with the with the premier and expressed how important it is that this particular thing sit on his desk as the lead in access because it's not only important to the tourism sector, it's important to the economy of our province and to the people. Um, and of course, in conjunction with the other prime, you know, ministers that would have, um, you know, transportation minister and of course the tourism minister and of course the industry minister. Um, yeah, so like just keeping the pressure on, on the government to make prior, make access their priority because it is our path to recovery, um, you know, both um, see, and air, um, of course, internally within our province, we don't have enough affordable access to get people around our province. So access is absolutely our number one priority. Other than getting through this pandemic, it, it is the priority. There's no doubt about it. Um, we've had many conversations, and of course, there is a um, a group you call them the uh, group of the willing. Um, um, from other sectors that have been advocating and there is a an air, um, you know a, a uh, airline uh, transportation plan that hopefully will be unfolding um yeah so i mean access we all know how important access is to this to this province yeah it's uh, we we do not get accidental tourists uh and uh, you're right brenda not only is it to and from the province uh, and not only does that affect tourism but it also affects the entire economy uh, I think that was cited also in the uh, Dame Green report that was released uh, just last week. Uh, one question for all three before we conclude. Uh, how can we work together post-COVID? How are we going to help operators post-COVID by working together? Well, I'll start with that one. Um, so first of all, TIAC and Hospital in Newfoundland and Labrador have a, a natural working relationship that we will continue to evolve um, when we are working together collaboratively on, uh, on advocacy issues. Um, I like, you know, and, and it, things like this, you know, opportunities for us to get together and to talk with, um, with industry are incredibly important. I cannot wait to come out and visit y'all. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a great opportunity to, to see and uh, to see you, to meet you, to see you, the working environment that you're in and to really get to know uh, the people of, of, of Newfoundland and Labrador and understand the, uh, the challenges that face your industry. And so I look forward to, uh, to doing that and to uh, continuing the collaborative work between the two organizations. Maybe I'll pop in next and give Brenda the last word. Um, I think throughout this pandemic, we've really very much relied on the principle of group genius uh, no one person has all the right answers to an unprecedented situation. And so we've really worked hard to engage all of our partners across the country in developing joint strategies and um, relying on joint investments going forward. Um, we do expect tourism has always been in a hyper competitive environment in normal times. And coming out of this, we expect that um, private sector and public sector governments will be fighting tooth and nail to reclaim uh, what was once theirs in terms of the tourism economy. So by working together and collaborating um, through investments, we feel we can have stronger impact and um, uh, make a, a bigger dent in the psyche of consumers around the world. So uh, for us, that's really been part of that group genius is just making sure that when we do have a chance to come out of the gate, we're doing so in the strongest possible way. So um, again, collaboration is the key to that. 
Yes, I agree 100%. We're stronger together. Um, of course, when when everyone is saying the same message, it does tend to penetrate when you're doing advocacy work for government. So with our partners with TIAC and Destination Canada, Hotel Association Canada, Restaurants Canada, um, you know, to cover off our different sectors and others to cover off our dif different sectors of the tourism industry. Uh, you know, we are stronger together. And of course, we all, you know, we're all fighting for, uh, you know, the wage subsidy because we know how important it is. So it does resonate. It does penetrate with 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 uh, the government officials. So yeah, stronger together is that is 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 the message. Awesome. Thank you very much uh, to all three of you for uh, for providing those insightful answers this morning. Unfortunately, we've run out of time and we've probably gone a little bit over, but we did manage to answer all the questions, which was fantastic. Uh, once again, thank you, merci, to uh, the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Destination Canada, for joining and partnering with Hospitality Newfoundland and Labrador today. But more importantly, thank you to the operators who are on the call. Uh, it is for you that we do this work, and it is because of you or through you that we understand what we should be working towards. Uh, I would encourage everybody, uh, you know, for the next month as we're doing tourism awareness things, to look around and see who's not on the call today and encourage them to get involved in any of the activities that are going on. Uh, there are multiple things happening. Uh, you can go to the HNL website and find out more or check the emails that we send out. Uh, but on that note, thank you all. Stay safe, be well, and we'll see you on the uh, on the next call. Thanks very much. Take care. Thanks,